everybody, this is Kimberly from Lakeside Loops and today I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful crocheted swimsuit cover-up. Um, I use Lion Brand's 24-7 cotton. This worked perfectly for the project. Um, I love how the dress lays. It's really durable. It's very breathable with the cotton. It's great. Um, I also use two different size crochet hooks. So you are going to need a five millimeter crochet hook. That's going to be used for this ribbed section. And you are also going to need a five point, sorry, 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. Um, and that is what I used to make this sort of mesh body part um, or the mesh body of the dress. The dress is two panels that are the exact same. Um, where work, you create the top section first right here, and then you sew the dress from there or crochet the dress from there down. Um, the only stitching that the seaming that you need to do is up here at the top. There's a little bit of seaming and as well as down the side of the dress itself. And then the trim is added on afterward up at the top around the armhole and at the bottom of the dress. I had a slit in mine that is optional. You could make it higher, lower or not at all. Um, yeah. And the, the pattern makes sizes from extra, extra small adult to five X adult. As with all of my video tutorials, you will also need the written instructions for this pattern. This video will just go over any of the trickier parts that are in that written pattern. Um, you can find the written pattern for free on my website, lakesideloops.com. You can also go to Etsy or Ravelry and download a, an ad-free printable version of the pattern. Um, and again, that's on Etsy or Ravelry. So you will need that. This video will just go over um, explaining how this garment is made. You will still need the written instructions to create all of the sizes. Okay, so as I said, or I think I said, this pattern is very beginner friendly. It uses really basic um, stitches. We're starting with the mesh body. And again, we're working from the top or the shoulders down. So we're going to be creating this section here. And then we're going to go and create this section. And then we'll join them together and work down from there. So row 1A. I'm going to recreate the small medium size, um, but you may be following along on the written pattern and be doing the extra small or the 4X. So again, look at your instructions. I need to chain four, but depending on what size you're making, you may have a different beginning chain. So I've chained four. If you're working on one of the larger sizes, then you would maybe be chaining six. And then I'm going to work a single crochet into the second chain from my hook. So not this chain, but the second chain from my hook, a single crochet. And now I'm going to chain two and skip one chain. So I'm skipping this chain and I'm going to single crochet into the next chain. Now, again, if you had had a chain of six, this would look a little bit different and you would work another chain of two, skip one and single crochet. But because my chain was four. This is where I stop for row 1A. Row 2A, I'm going to chain one, turn. I'm going to single crochet into the first stitch. And then I'm going to single crochet into the gap space. So what that means is I'm going to single crochet over this chain of two that I created. So I'm going to insert my hook into the gap space, this big hole, grab my yarn and pull it through and then yarn over and pull through both loops on my hook. And now I'm going to single crochet into, in my case, the last stitch because I'm working on the small medium size. But again, if you're working on a bigger size, you would have a couple of more stitches there. So that was row two, row three, turn. I'm going to work one single crochet. Now I'm going to chain two again, but only skip one stitch. So I'm going to skip this stitch and single crochet into this stitch. And now for row four, I'm going to chain one, turn. I'm going to work a single crochet into the first stitch. Now I'm going to single crochet into the gap space. So right into here, I'm going to insert my hook, grab my yarn and pull it through. And now I'm going to single crochet into this last stitch. 
So this is where I'm at after the first four rows. And it's kind of hard to see this take shape, but once we get going, these um, chains of two and the single crochets that we're putting into these gap spaces are going to start to look like this and it creates this beautiful mesh. Um, normally you would have a single crochet of one when you're skipping one stitch, but we're single crocheting two because I wanted to create more of a mesh look. Um, when I just did the chain one, these single crochets were sort of too tight together and there wasn't a big of enough hole here. I wanted a bigger hole. Um, I really tried to create a classic looking um, cover up, something that was on the modest side, but that you'd still hopefully feel really great in. So I hope um, that you like this as much as I do. Um, so now for row five, uh, I'm going to chain one, turn, and I'm going to work two single crochets into this first stitch. And now what we are doing is we are creating an increase on one side. So this side is going to continue to be straight and then this side is going to curve out and that is how these sections remain. So this is straight, this curves out and then on the opposite side, which is later on in the pattern, we're going to skip ahead to row 1B. So this is 1A, we're going to do 1B and we'll be straight on this side and coming out on this side and then we'll join it all together in later rows. So two single crochets into that first stitch, and then we are going to chain two, skip one, and then single crochet, in my case, into the last stitch. Again, if you're working one of the bigger sizes, you might have a couple of more stitches to do there. Row six, I'm gonna chain one, I'm going to turn, single crochet into my first stitch, single crochet into my gap space, and now I'm going to chain two, skip one stitch, and then I'm going to work two single crochets into this last stitch. So again, we're only doing these two single crochets or these increases on one side. The other side is going to continue to go straight up. So we will continue on like this for quite a few rows. So I'm going to skip ahead and then come back to you. All right, so I've skipped ahead here and I've completed, um, again, because I'm making the small slash medium size, I've completed row 1A to row 14A. Um, and then I stop here, I fasten off, so I cut my yarn and I set this piece aside. Then I skip ahead to the instructions um, beginning with row 1B. And what I'm doing, so this is what I just created. This is row 1A to 14A and this is row 1B to 14B. So if you're doing um, the extra small or the 4X for example sizes you would um, stop at different rows than 14. Um, I go to 14 because I did the small medium but follow the written instructions um, and what I did like I said these sides go straight out and then these ones curve in to create um, the neck of our dress. So this is this section and this is this section. So in my case, I stop at 14 um, with row 1A to 14A. I cut my yarn with, when I'm done with the B section, I don't cut my yarn. It doesn't say fasten off, so you can keep your yarn attached and on your hook. You're going to skip to row, it says row 13 slash 15 slash 17 slash 19 slash 21. So for me, this is row 15 uh, because I'm working on the small medium size. So I am still working on this same piece that I was before. So this was row 14B. I'm now on row 13 slash 15. So this is 15 for me. So I chain one, I'm going to turn and I'm going to single crochet into the first stitch. So this is all kind of what you're used to. This is what you've been doing. We're just going to simply work across um, the top of this panel, just like we have been, except with no increases. 
And then when we get to the end, it's a little bit different and I will show you what happens there. Okay, so I single crochet until two stitches remain in my row and then I chain two, skip one stitch and single crochet into my last stitch. Now, my instructions say, in my case, because I'm doing the small medium size, I need to chain five. So just grab some more yarn here. So chain five, one, two, three, four, five, okay. Now the instructions say working into the last stitch of row 14a. So this first panel that we did and working into the last stitch of that panel. So I don't want to be over here. I want to be into this last stitch. So where my yarn end is, that's my last stitch and that's the first stitch I want to work into into this row. So I don't want to work into it over here. This wasn't my last stitch. I want to work into it over here. This is my last stitch. Also, if you look at the bottom, where I started is over here, and it's the same with this panel, okay? If that helps you figure out where you're starting. So, working into this stitch, I'm going to follow the instructions and work a single crochet, and then I'm going to work across the top of this, and that will connect these two panels uh, together. Sorry. This is so hard to do on a, I say this every time I make a video of tutorial, but it really is. I challenge you, if you've never uh, made a video of trouble before, try to crochet through a phone screen. Maybe it's my age and I don't have my glasses on, but I find it tricky. So anyway, I've, you can see here, I've worked across the top of um, row 14B and then I chained my created my chain and now I'm working across um, 14a. And it says to repeat until, so chain two, skip one, single crochet and gap space until you have two stitches remaining in your row, chain two, skip one, single crochet in that last stitch. All right, so from now on, we will be working back and forth across here, building our garment. Um, now we're going to create a couple of straight rows and then we're gonna start working out so you will see here so these first couple of rows after let me zoom out here okay so these first couple of rows after we created these sections let me lay this on top and maybe an easier visual so this is what we've done so far and these first couple of rows are just straight. And then we want to start to curve out um, because this isn't big enough to cover us in the front. Whoever is wearing this garment, clearly this isn't enough. So we need to go out so that there's more fabric here to cover um, the front of us. This is just sort of up around our shoulders. And now we need to go out to cover uh, ourselves the way we want to. So. Um, like I said, no increases for the next couple of rows, and then you're going to start to see um, increases on the sides. But the basic stitch, you kind of have it down by now. And um, if you just follow the instructions, you'll see that there are some increases depending on what size you're working on. It'll tell you to stop at a different spot. And then when you're going down the rest of the garment, it's just straight down, um, which is really easy, perfect for if you're watching a show. Just continue working. Um, straight down and then you're going to repeat this whole process again to create a back panel or a second panel um, and then I will show you how to seam it all together 
All right, in an effort to save some time and make this video as quick as possible for you, um, I've clearly skipped ahead here. Um, you are going to, once you have completed both panels, lay them directly on top of one another. Um, so as you can see, this already has the ribbing on it and it's already been attached, but pretend the ribbed edge isn't here and you just have the two panels, you are laying them flat directly on top of each other. You're going to start by slip stitching um, trying to find where I, right there. Um, you're going to start by slip stitching the very top, so row 1A to row 1A of one sleeve and row 1B, or shoulder I guess, um, to row 1B of the other. So you're just going to slip stitch uh, those stitches at the top. So just a few, like you only have three stitches if you did the small medium size or five stitches if you did some of the bigger size. So you'll have three to five slip stitches across the top here to join these two shoulder pieces together. Then you're going to go down and work on the side of your dress. So you're going to count your rows and make sure that everything is lined up from one panel to the next. Make sure everything, all the holes are lined up, everything is equal. You could even just count down from the shoulder, put a stitch marker, and then count down along the back and put a stitch marker to make sure that you're working into the same row um, into both panels, into the same row. So I have it in the written instructions which row you're going to work into um, to start, but you're going to attach some yarn right here, use your 6.5 millimeter cro crochet hook, and you are just going to slip stitch working into both the front and back panel. You can see my slip stitching stitches along here where I slip stitched these panels together. So you're just going to slip stitch all the way down and you could stop, you could create a higher slit if you wanted or you could go all the way to the bottom and create no slit at all. Um, I did have a little bit of a slit um, so, but it's totally up to you. And what I liked about this is that because the shoulders are done, you can actually, if you're creating this for you, you can throw this on. Um, so work your slip stitches down until, and I have in the written pattern where I stopped. So you can follow that or just until you think you're where you want to be, leave the yarn there, don't cut it yet, um, or leave a long end and then go to the other side, repeat the process. So slip stitching, I slip stitched on this side, um, slip stitching all the way down and then again stop and then you can try the garment, you can try the dress on and see, okay, is this where I want my slit? Okay, no, I'm going to slip stitch a little more or, oh, maybe this, I want more of a slit so you can take a few stitches out. Um, that would be my suggestion. So once you have it all seamed together, now we're going to work on the trim. So there's trim at the bottom on both front and back panel. And then there's trim around the armholes and trim around the neck. All right, so for the trim, the first thing you need to do is turn your dress right side out. We want to be working on our trim with the good side facing out. So you're going to turn your dress so that the seam that you just created, the side seam, is facing in. And then you're going to lay your garment out. I would start with the, sorry, hit the camera. I would start with the bottom trim just because that's the easiest. Um, you're working sort of in a straight line, whereas the armhole trim and the neck trim, um, you're working into rows and into stitches because you're working in a circle. This, you're just working into stitches. So it's a little bit easier um, to start with this until you have the hang of it and then move on to this trim. But either way, it's very easy. It's just slip stitches. So you'll see in the written instructions, I say to start on the edge, um, you're going to attach yarn here and you're going to chain. And then you're going to start slip stitching down your chain and into each stitch along the bottom of your garment and then back up your chain. So we're working in rows back and forth like this. So I will show you, I've already gone quite a ways here. Let me just reattach my yarn. Okay, so I just slip stitched along here. I'm going to chain one. I'm going to turn and now I'm going to slip stitch into the back loop only. So you can see the slip stitches that I just made. 
are kind of facing this way. When I turn, I can kind of only see the front loop. The back loop is kind of facing away from me. So when I turn, I need to kind of tilt so I can see my row kind of from the top down. If I just hold it sideways, I can't really see that back loop. So this is, this is the front loop. This is the back loop. I want to go into the back loop. And slip stitch. So into the back loop and slip stitch nice and loose and again this is where we're using our five millimeter crochet hook instead of the 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. So we're just working our way down our row and then on our last slip stitch we're working into the back loop and into the next stitch in our row or gap space. And now I'm going to chain one, turn again, and again working into the back loop. And your stitch count should be the same for each row of ribbing that you're doing. And you're just working your way back up your row and again try to keep your stitches loose I know with slip stitches they can get kind of tight so just try to keep the yarn a little loose on your hook we made it all the way to the end now we're going to chain one rotate again and so again working into the back loop, back loop only we're just slip stitching and it creates this really awesome it almost looks like knitted ribbed material and sometimes if I if I slip stitch too tight I need to use my nail to get my hook in there and again on the last one I'm going to go into the stitch and or into the um, back loop only and then also into the stitch in my row to join them together so again chain one turn and I'm just going to keep doing this until I get to the end of the row. So you can see the full stitch counts and everything in the written pattern. Um, once you have completed that side you can do the other um, back side of the dress and then when it comes to the top I worked along the back so I started in the back center or I guess a little offside here <laughs> started in the back um, and worked my rows around that way, if I did have a seam, which I, you can't really see it from the back, but you can see it from the inside, um, it's at the center back, or in my case, toward the center back of the dress. And again, because we're working in a circle, sometimes you're working into rows. Like you see here, you would be working into the side of the row, but like along this part of the dress, you'd be working into stitches. So just anywhere where you see a space. This leaves a lot of margin for error because it's stretchy. Um, and you, it's also easy to go back and kind of redo it if you feel like um, you've made a mistake. But basically anywhere where you see an opening um, is where you would slip stitch into when you're coming back toward your garment, um, working the rib section. And it's the same thing for the armhole. You're mostly going um, into rows. So every row you attach your yarn. So that is it for this video tutorial. I really, really hope that you enjoyed this pattern. Um, I really enjoyed making it and I'm so proud of how it turned out. Um, let me know how yours looks. I would love to see these on you this summer. Um, please tag me at Lakeside Loops. I look forward to what you create. Thanks guys.